Deepak Wamea, our CTO for APAC with Dell Technologies. Thanks for joining us on My Security TV here in uh, Da Nang, uh, Vietnam with Canalyst. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. It's a um, pleasure to be here. Yeah, great. Look, the CTO role for APAC, your, your client facing, uh, mm -hmm. maybe in, insights into your role uh, and what you're actually advising clients at the moment. Uh, digital transformation and this uh, conference here this year is once again on AI, uh, three years into uh, since open um, uh, chat GBT yeah. hit the market. Indeed, actually, and it, a lot has happened. We still feel it's in, still in infancy stage. We are just getting started. But particularly from my roles uh, uh, as a CTO for EPJ, I lead a team of all the regional CTOs and we do precisely two things. One is uh, as extension of the global office of the CTO, our job is to make sure we uh, position Dell Technologies as an innovation powerhouse. So a lot of times customers and partners, they know about Dell from the product and technologies they consume and they experience. Yeah. But we like to actually bring more of a broader view in terms of what we are doing and what why we are doing, most importantly. Second one, we actually uh, get involved in a lot of GTM activities to work with our customers and partners to actually help them through their business transformation or uh, tech transformation initiatives. That could be uh, AI strategy, uh, data management, uh, security transformation, or overall uh, uh, business initiatives which they have. So it's, it's quite active, uh, yeah. active work. Yeah. What are some of the outlooks for 2026? Uh, much like what we're seeing in 2025, uh, a bit more use cases, and I think we'll cover off in a bit uh, on the industry verticals that you might be seeing as well. But yeah, 2026, anything sort of a standout? Uh, there might be some supply issues on memory we hear from, from this year. Um, so, yeah. so two two fold things. I mean, there's lot in ha lots happening in the industry. First of all, uh, particularly from the outlook perspective, or my experience at least, uh, what I see is customers will actually try to apply AI to the most core processes to their businesses. Try to actually see some nice nice ROI out of it, because most of the customers I'm talking to actually they are struggling with actually getting ROI for their initial pilots. Uh, that's also because traditionally a lot of customers they start with the low hanging fruits, which are not directly contributing to anything as a business outcome yeah. and uh, AI being uh, higher capex to start with sometimes actually it's very difficult to justify it to the CFO. So I see that will be changing and uh, we'll see more customers actually having tangible business outcome focus use cases instead of just focusing on the fancy tools like LLMs or GPUs or individual components. Yeah. Uh, that's one part. Second one when it comes to industry obviously there are a lot of turbulence going on. Uh, there are a lot of industry events which Dell needs to respond to, obviously, uh, particularly related to memory and other issues. Uh, we are still figuring it out. There will be uh, other official statement coming in. If you need more details, I can definitely connect yeah. you with the team. Uh, but as of now, it's uh, there's nothing at least I am aware of. Uh, particularly, we see the AI momentum going stronger next year. Uh, uh, in my personal experience, I feel uh, AI is just getting started yeah. and uh, evolution of the technology, be it uh, agentic or uh, other areas where models are getting better, smarter. I think this will directly help customers in actually getting more contextuality, more accuracy, which is closer to their business so that they can justify the AI investment faster. The other one is uh, data centers. A lot of investment going into data centers globally. Mm. I take it that's good for business uh, for, for Dell, right? You, you're supplying no, no storage and there. the servers, yeah? <laughs> yeah, no complaints there. So look, the uh, data centers is, uh, is something which is actually uh, is fueled by the AI growth. Uh, there are a lot of uh, customers who now realize that uh, the, it, the models are available to everyone. GPU, anyone can buy. What differentiates them from anybody else into their operating area or vertical they are into is their own data, which is their intellectual property. And most of the customers naturally are guard sub about it. So there comes a discussion about data privacy and sovereignty when it comes to a national level. And uh, all these new data centers which are coming are actually fueling these conversations and enabling customers to actually adopt AI on enterprise level faster instead of them worrying about data. So it will be easier for customers to actually uh, partner with these new data center providers, uh, aka Neo Clouds or NCP or uh, all these uh, uh, new GPU as a service providers to actually take the AI implementation closer to the customer's intellectual property, which is their data. So it'll, it'll, I would say it will fuel the AI adoption and it will be a little bit easier from customer's point of view. Well, the last one, uh, APJ being your region versus EMEA and, and the Americas, how, how do you find APJ uh, sort of sits there? Are they moving much the same pace or is it still a standout region? Look, APJ overall is not a monolith as we see from outside, right? There are a lot of micro chasm, there are different, different economies. Uh, each one of them, they have different maturities uh, in which how they operate. I see some of the governments actually discussing sovereign AI on a national security or national uh, 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 national level strategies. Yeah. That 
includes two fold uh, regulations one is uh, ai uh, implementation so guidelines second one is the data <laughs> security guidelines so yeah. so it's it's more of a oxymoron because you need credible data for actual having a good ai implementation so and that becomes a law of the land so every enterprise need to be uh, abiding by the, that that law yeah. so on a on a ai perspective overall in apj there is a mixed sentiment i would say but in a positive way because everyone has their own pace of uh, innovation and pace of moving forward yeah. uh, but uh, there are some some uh, customers and some region they are doing way better than others but i would say that's natural progression for any technology adoption you know well uh, i was going to sort of differentiate between asean oceania and what we're seeing might be in india and china here in vietnam uh, you know you see a lot of growth here uh, as well mm. how how does vietnam sort of stand out since that we're sitting here in uh, the middle of vietnam in danong uh, it's, yeah, it's not every day you get to visit a beautiful place like the yeah. Nam. Obviously, it's mostly business districts for us. But it's it's one of the important country for uh, for us in uh, Southeast Asia and AM region for us. Yeah. Uh, obviously, personally, I also I visit here a lot, and we have a lot of great customers within Vietnam as well who are actually walking the walk with us. Nice. Well, enjoy the rest of Canlis. We're about to go into the closing session yeah. uh, here in Da Nang. I think I said Da Nang earlier, but uh, we're here in Da Nang uh, in Vietnam. Uh, enjoy the rest of the session, and thanks very much, Deepak, for joining us on My Screen TV. Thanks for having me, Chris. Thank it's you. Pleasure to be here. Well,